Who told you to stop playing? In the film industry, an auteur is used to identify a director whose creative influence over the film is so great you can usually tell who made the movie from a single scene. Honorary titles like this usually go to directors such as Tarantino and Hitchcock. But what happens when you take an auteur and give him his own game? You get something like John Woo's Stranglehold. John Woo is an action director hailing from China who is most notable for his highly stylized action films that would go on to be a major inspiration for action games and movies alike. Midway, in the 2000s, approached John Woo with the plan of creating a video game IP off an established franchise. Wu accepted the offer and gave Midway his blessing to use one of his main characters in his arguably most well-known action movie, Hard Boiled. With the return of Inspector Tequila, and yes, that is his name, Stranglehold is a full-fledged sequel to Hard Boiled. Unfortunately, we will not be talking about the story much because, well, there's not much to talk about. While the game is a sequel to the film, there is very little connecting it besides a few shared characters. If you want the gist of it, Tequila's wife and daughter were kidnapped and then Tequila kills enough men in China to probably contribute to at least 2% of the country's deaths that year. What Stranglehold lacks in story, it makes up for in gameplay, and trust me, if you're a fan of Wu's films, Stranglehold totally nails his style. The game is a fast-paced third-person shooter where destruction and style reign supreme. Tequila can jump in all sorts of directions and slow down time giving you some control over the breakneck pace the game runs at. You may think it's another Max Payne ripoff by doing this, and that was a general comparison to the game at the time. But funny enough, the Max Payne devs have said Wu's use of slow-mo in his films was a direct inspiration for the mechanic. So it's Stranglehold making use of a mechanic popularized by Max Payne that was in turn taken from Wu's film, so the game has this weird full circle in its history. The slowdown the game triggers automatically whenever Tequila dives, with enemies present on the screen. This leads to a huge majority of gameplay being in the slow-mo status, but thankfully you can turn it off and on at will. Normally this would feel repetitive after an hour or two, but the motion in the dives and the weight the gun gives when you fire hundreds of rounds into your enemies made it feel satisfying nearly every time. Although before you can enjoy this gameplay, I have to let you know, if you're playing this on PC, there is some weird mouse sensitivity issues where you can breathe on your damn mouse and Tequila will do a full 360. I had to turn sensitivity down completely, and even then the mouse still moved around a bit too fast for my liking. Okay, going back to style, the game carefully places environmental objects Tequila could use. This ranges from Tequila diving onto a dining cart and just raining hell on whoever is in front of him as the cart rolls forward. If you listen closely, you could probably hear Fortunate Son in the background when he does this. But I'm not gonna play the music because YouTube will automatically copyright me to death. Then you also have pipes Tequila could slide on, making you feel like you're playing some sort of homicidal jet set radio. And paths you could run across, but they're not just your regular paths. Some of them are fucking dinosaur bones that Tequila uses their spine and tails to boost himself up and just light people up. You can't tell me getting an assist from a fucking brontosaurus isn't the sickest shit ever. Going back to what I said about the slow-mo, these objects give you a break from the constant diving, and when used all together, you can create your own action hero moments that honestly make you feel like a badass. There are a few environmental hazards as well to use against your enemies, but honestly I kind of have a bone to pick with them. And no, that's not a dinosaur pun. The gameplay is so fast, and with the use of slow-mo, you could decimate entire hit squads in seconds. But the environmental hazards are so damn slow, you end up having to wait there awkwardly for the damn things to fall down and hit the little shit shooting you. When the gameplay is that fast, the hazards you use to your advantage should feel just as fast, instead of having this real awkward pacing to it. It's just a classic example of good idea but not so good execution. Now you may wonder if it's difficult to create these cool action moments with all the mechanics given to you cause, you know, guns gotta reload. Well, John Woo woke up and said fuck reloading so every single gun in the game has a limitless clip. Sure, you could still run out of bullets, but running out of bullets isn't so bad when everyone in the room is already dead. This is important because when you set such a fast pace in the game, you want to do everything you can to make sure you keep that pace playable. Stuff like the environmental hazards bring the pace down, but those are optional. 
But if you were forced to reload, then that would be a consistent blue ball of pacing, but thankfully the devs were aware of this and made the right choice. Something about unloading about 85 rounds within 5 seconds with just 2 pistols just feels right. Honestly, the reason why I think it feels right is because the weapons all feel very powerful. You ever have a moment in a game where you're running out of ammo and you run over to that shiny gun on the ground only for you to go, wait, no, the submachine guns are trash in this game. Well, in Stranglehold, that doesn't happen. Every gun in the game hits like a truck, while managing to have their own qualities that don't make them feel the same. Guns like the shotgun don't have a lot of range, but the sheer destruction they cause makes up for it. Every time you go into slow-mo and land a headshot is met with this satisfying squish of meat and you just feel like you totally annihilated someone. Assault rifles have a very fast fire rate but they remain accurate, so when a bunch of idiots think it's a good idea to rush the guy with an M16, you can make them immediately regret that decision. Some machine guns lack the accuracy and range the assault rifles have, but they make up for it with a fire rate that would make any war crime enthusiast out there fall in love. These things are practically two miniguns on a stick and it almost makes you wish you had even more people to shoot. Now last thing to cover in gameplay are Tequila's special abilities, all of which add a very flashy dramatic flair to the combat. By using slow-mo in environmental objects, you could fill meter, and the more meter you have, the more abilities you have access to. The first is a precision shot, where you turn your current gun into a sniper and take out enemies that decided to be cowards and take cover in your action movie. The cool thing about this is the enemies react to where they got hit, and give you one of those Oscar-winning dramatic death moments. If you shoot them in the eye, they'll clutch that fancy new hole you gave their skull before dying. If you shoot them in the mouth, they will actually end up swallowing the bullet, and you could hear this really sick gargle as they choke on it. You know, I wonder what happens if you... Oh shit! Oh! Oh my god, I am sorry. I am so sorry. Oh my god. He, he's not dying. He's not dying. He's still there. He's still hanging- oh god. Wait. Okay, don't tell anyone what you just saw. That's our little secret. Moving on, there is this special barrage ability where Tequila will reload his weapon with a fresh clip. Which is kind of weird because this will be the only time you reload in the fucking game. And your weapon is given a dramatic increase in power and fire rate while slowing the world around you. The catch is, you actually move around faster in this slow-mo than the others, so Tequila becomes this one-man army of death. Just like I mentioned with a precision shot, there are unique reload animations depending on what gun you have. The reload animation for the handguns is easily the coolest, while the assault rifle is just kind of boring. But I want to point out, if you do this with the shotgun equipped, Tequila does this like little disapproving nod while he's reloading. I don't know why I love this so much, but it's almost like in his mind he's saying some one-liner like, motherfuckers always trying to ice skate uphill, before he just slaughters an entire room of people. This will come in handy, especially in the later levels where you'll realize the AI suddenly has a death wish and they all just bum rush you even though there is plenty of cover around. We'll talk about some weird things with the game design and AI later, but for now just know it's super satisfying to have 7 man stand in front of you only to get blown away seconds later with this ability active. Finally, we have the spin attack ability where Tequila spins around and manifests fucking doves to fly around him as he takes out whoever is in the room. Now where the fuck did the doves come from? I have no idea, but I do know the meaning behind them. Wu has said he believes doves represent purity and uses the doves to represent the human soul. So in his movie The Killer, he would place a bird flying away when a character died to represent that even if that character has done evil in his life, his spirit can still be saved in the end. So if you're religious, just make sure to carry a pocket dove around with you just in case tequila bursts down your door and shoots you about 26 times in the chest with a shotgun. Still, the spin attack is insanely powerful because it's a room clear at the press of a button. Like all the other abilities, you will have a unique animation depending on the gun you have equipped. I will say you should probably go out of your way to use this with your pistols cause it just looks really damn cool. And if you use the assault rifle, it just kinda looks... Well, when you were young, did you ever pretend you were an action hero and did really dumb spinny stuff? Yeah, it looks just like that. Now let's talk AI and difficulty. As I mentioned earlier, the AI in this game isn't exactly the best, but it's a good and bad thing. 
The good is, this is a very arcadey type of shooter, and you want to style on your enemies without worrying about them taking cover and ruining your cool action plan. But on the other hand, in the later levels, enemies just seem to bum rush you, which can cause a problem. There is a cover system in the game, but like I said, this game has a pacing to it, and sitting behind a cover not only stalls that pace, but also just feels against what the game wants you to do, which is to be an over-the-top action hero. Although, it's not like cover matters when you got 10 people rushing you down and walking past your cover. I know I've said a good amount of times how you can mow down enemies in seconds, but in the later levels the game suffers from the classic we're gonna turn enemies into bullet sponges so the game feels harder. So what starts as this fun decimation of enemies turns into an actual threat, but not a threat that is engaging or fun. What makes this worse is when you watch a cutscene, enemies will just spawn in front of you and they are already shooting, giving you little time to react and you will take a good amount of damage because of it. I think this happens because the game has a set spawn location for the enemies, which don't account for the player's position as the cutscene ends. Since I talked about bullet sponges, there are boss fights in the game and unfortunately they are pretty bad. So the regular gameplay is a blast because you are constantly on the move tearing through enemies and building meters so you could use your abilities as a payoff to cap off the action sequence. However, when you fight the bosses, that shit gets thrown out the window and into the garbage. Because the boss fights are usually one-on-ones and you are not killing enemies to build meter. Instead, you have to rely on these origami birds to fill it again. This is bad because the bosses need more lead than the fucking US military orders to actually put them down. And your abilities do the most damage to them, but you can't kill other enemies to build that meter back up. I mean, look at this bullshit. I literally activate the ability to turn tequila into a walking army and it's barely dwindling away this person's health. With how much damage they soak, fucking Borderlands is over here wondering if they should be in their game instead. I love good boss fights. They're easily the most engaging moments in gaming for me. When they are done right. But if I had a dollar for every game I reviewed that dropped the ball on boss fights, I'd have two dollars. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird it's happened twice. Alright, sucks I have to end the gameplay segment on a downer with the drawbacks of the gameplay, but we can move on to the visuals and audio, which have even more drawbacks. <sighs> So in 2019, the game was re-released on GOG after being taken off stores digitally. So unfortunately, you're not buying a remaster or anything, and holy shit, the little work that they put into the port definitely shows. Let's start with audio, and I'm sorry to say if you are hard of hearing, the game does not have any options for subtitles for some strange reason. The good news is, as I mentioned earlier, the story just kind of exists and isn't important, but if you're hard of hearing and are interested in the story, then fuck you, I guess? Another example of the poor options this game has is there are no audio sliders for voice, only effects and music. So dialogue tends to get drowned out by the massive gunfights you have, not only in cutscenes but in gameplay as well. And yes, if you turn the effects slider all the way down, you get rid of the dialogue as well. If I had a dollar for every time I reviewed a game that had weird audio options like this, I'd have two dollars. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird it's happened- ah oh, god damn it. So for visuals, your options are pretty damn limited. All you can really do is set your resolution and decide if you want to fuck with shadows or not. One weird visual thing I notice is certain cutscenes drop hard in resolution while others are fine. Which again is another sign they didn't put much effort into the PC port. Also, uh, fuck the camera in this game. For some reason, if Tequila gets too close to a wall, the camera will zoom in close enough to the back of Tequila's head, you'll almost think the game wants you to admire his cut. When you play on maps that are set indoors, or even maps that are just densely populated with objects, it's almost like the game handed the camera to a toddler who somehow found the zoom in feature. And yes, this can be just as disorientating as I'm making it sound. Which is a shame because these maps are honestly a high point of the game. In some levels, you'll be thrown into a night market, destroying food stands, neon signs, and even fruit carts. And in other levels, you'll be in a museum hanging out with dinosaur fossils and displays that seem like a recreation of the terracotta army in China. With the attention to detail and with the variety the levels bring, nearly all the maps were a blast to play in. Except this one map where you were thrown into some rainy construction zone? I feel like they needed to pad the length of the game and they just kind of threw that in because how the fuck do you go from a multi-million dollar penthouse to this? The level itself wasn't even bad, it's just everything before it hits the mark so well, this one just stands out as mediocre. In closing, Stranglehold is a mixed box. 
The high points of the game are honestly really good, and I had a blast in some of the levels. I think I would have liked the second half of the game more if they just tossed the bullet sponge trash out the window and rethink adding bosses in the game entirely. Not every game needs a boss. Unless you're from software, which in that case, yeah, put as many bosses in the game as you like. Just, just fuck that shit up with bosses, man. If you want a game with fun gunplay, creative combat systems that allow you to freestyle throughout the game, and just a throwback to classic Max Payne type of running gun shooters, then Stranglehold is up your alley. You can pick it up on GOG during a sale, and it'll go for less than 10 bucks. Just don't expect too much from the port itself. Don't get me wrong, the game runs fine, but there are some small things that may annoy you, like the fucking audio sliders not raising dialogue. Jesus Christ, why does that keep happening to me? I'm Chris from Genuine Chill, even though I genuinely lost my chill for a second there. If you liked the video, you should like the video, and if you want to save me from doing Dead by Daylight content, please, for the love of God, subscribe and support the review videos. And that's only if you find the review videos, like, good. If you don't, then you don't have to do that, don't worry about it. As for what I'll review next, shit man, I don't know, there's a ton of games out there, and even more in my ever-growing backlog. I'll pull something out of my ass once this video is over with. Till then, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Actually, now that I think about it, I wonder why the game was named Stranglehold. Down and give us Hong Kong. Your Stranglehold. Oh.